Do you think that she's going to confront Carlos? When it comes to Melody, I would understand. It doesn't know, right. I don't know if she's in an environment where someone is receptive to her trauma. I think when it comes to women, there's that level of sensitivity that Carlos King's missing. And I don't think Damien's going to be there. Production's not looking for him. Y'all see how it just comes for me out of nowhere? It's insecurity. I was just saying You something. can't stand that I worked I on that show. I mean, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's, let's get, let's get, no let's stunt get, queens let's get, over here, boo. You. Yes, let's get I back. Not... Hey, it's a brotherhood. Woohoo! Hey, everyone, it's your bro, Mitch Kimbro. I'm here with the bros. Now, Carlos King celebrated a Huffington Post article that called Love and Marriage Huntsville the messiest show that you should be watching. Now, fans are noticing that in Carlos King's caption, he thanks Huffington Post for acknowledging his creation. While Melody Cherie gave Carlos the initial idea for a show, Carlos King's the one that brought it to our screens. Damien, working professionally with Love and Marriage Huntsville as a producer, producer. Do you see an issue with what Carlos King said in his caption? No, and I feel like it's being taken more personal than what it really is. Um, it is his creation. And you said that Melody brought him the show. They brought a home improvement type show to him. Her and her husband were going to rebuild homes or something like that. Carlos said, I specialize in ensemble. Do you have any friends? They casted the friends and it turned into what I like to say, like the real housewives of own. Oh, I think he's right. It's it's his property. If you, Mitch, if you were to go sell Bro Chat to MTV, it's their property now. You might be the executive producer, but you no longer own it unless you just got a special contract or something. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> Victor, what do you think about this whole thing? I see your face. Oh, uh, no. I mean, I'm, not me. Oh, yes. Uh, so the angel I, Bro I, Chat. Yes, I, actually, I actually agree. For once, I actually agree on this situation with Carlos King. I do think this is the messiest show on television and I do think it's thanks to him for being a hot mess express in every aspect of the production have the most kind of unprofessional conduct in the production of your network speaking on YouTube and laughing about your cast members going to jail I think you can see on the Love and Marriage DC having a whole year where you're not telling anyone what to do and where they are and just having a break for absolutely no reason and no one knows what's going on i think that's completely unprofessional i think it's unprofessional that one of your producers ended up dating the man of someone that they were the story producer for after the show and then you brought them back and gave them a platform i think it is you know a dumpster truck on fire rather than is cut is it colors to credit i think it's colors to fault so that's how i look at it you think it's what it's marlos's fault he said yeah it's a hot mess express the show and he's laughing and giggling and falling out of his chair when people are going to jail. And he's giggling about his cast members every week with um with Heavenly. I, I don't think well, that's D Dubai took that long break too. Maybe it was more of a network thing. Um, the, the DC was, show took a break in the middle of the season. It was it, like in the yeah. middle of the season. So they like, split it up. I'm like, wait, what's going on? Cause we see other shows come out every year or six months, what's happening. And the one thing that we did not do that I want to apologize publicly to the cast for, we did not inform them of what was going on because I was still figuring out what was going on at the same time. I apologize on behalf of, I'll just say me, it's my company, for not keeping y'all updated and feeling like you guys were the stepchildren of Huntsville. Yeah, well, you know, we felt well, like we for that. We had episode nine, and then 10 months later, we got episode 10. And they didn't intentionally split mm -hmm. up. In the middle of the season. But, but in episode nine, um, we, ha we had no clue what happened, and the cast members had no clue what happened. Right. But, but, but no one but, knew what happened. Was but, that the Christmas party? Yeah, that was Christmas, Christmas party. party. But listen, Love and Marriage Huntsville is the number one one series on own. That's a and low I think, bar. No, I don't think it's a low bar. I think mm -hmm. that there are individual bars and success is success. And mm -hmm. it, Victor, it shouldn't be minimized or treated as less. Success is success. And I think that it should be celebrated the fact that we're looking at, we're looking at Carlos, who is very passionate about his shows. He's fully invested in his cast, in his production, in his crew. I don't agree. And he was, Carlos was celebrating a Huffington Post article on his Instagram messiness. page. On his, on his Instagram. Well, look, but we, we can say bro we, chat's we messy. Yeah, we yeah we are. We can get messy. After what we just went through, right? I mean, yeah, we're, 
we can be pretty messy. But yeah, but if, right, if, if yeah. the difference. Well, let me let me finish. Wait, 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 But there's a difference between. But just to respond to that quickly. No, don't. You can't respond if you didn't hear what I said. Not up to Damien. No, let let me finish what I'm saying because the thing about it is Carlos King is celebrating a Huffington Post article on his Instagram page, and I think it's okay. I think it's just fine for him to say my creation. He didn't name any names and give that credit to Melody. But 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 Victor, before you say your thing, Tamar, what do you think about everything? Well, I mean, I I I feel like at the same time, yeah, he it is his his show. He created the show, so it was his creation. Um, I agree with Victor as well about it being the hot miss express i don't think carlos king had his hands you know the only one that's that's driving the truck here i think that it, it goes from him and everyone else like the scenes floating freelancers included i just think that a lot of people they play a portion of producing this show i like the fact that damien he defends it as well even though he's not working there anymore and they got rid of him but i mean baby you yeah, wish they got rid of me it. somebody better get you carlos get on the line from every job. call the you cast members baby you have. call the cast members that's why you're that's why and you're see, this is why he's really you're bad. Y'all see how he just comes for me out of nowhere? It's insecurity. I was just saying something. You can't something. stand that I worked I on that show. That you can't stand that myself... Oh, 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 wait. And Carlos, his post that he made, unlike you, he has credentials. He can post that. Mr. Put a tripod in your room and pose, and all of a sudden you're a supermodel. <laughs> you're not. You're a loser, and you're a hater. <laughs> and you get on here, and you hate on me every week because you're so envious and jealous that it's seeping from your pores, sweetheart. That You're just upset because Carlos King sent you out on the street. You no, have he no didn't. money or anything no, to put he on, did on not. yourself. That's why you no, have to he come did home not, with sweetheart. tank and shorts that were used from previous clients but ago. You, you make like, no I just sense, don't think Devon. That, that, Devon, that come on. You make no going. sense. So it's, like, like, it's getting old. Yeah. It's tired. Okay. But that is what I you, do think about it. I love that he has his success for that show. Dude, this, um, I, I love watching I Miss Express. He took accountability. He owned that show. He owns it on own. Well, I have no credentials. Resume. Why are you still talking? No one okay, resume hold on, hold on, credentials. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, 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 life. Let's, let's get let's get no let's stunt get, queens get, over here, boo. You. Yes, let's get back. I did not let's cash get, up you. You're still talking. Let's get back. Let's get back. Let's get back. Okay. Thank for your services right now. All right, let's get back. Okay, Vi Victor. Oh yeah, but quickly let me get do a two on one real quick. So Damien, a two on one read. I know a two on one response because oh, there were two okay. things that were sad. Thing. I'm ready. I'm trying to get red. Come on, whatever you got. So I think, so I think Damien, the distinction between Brocha and us being messy as co-hosts on a panel versus a wide scale production. I think it's one thing for cast members and people who appear on the screen to behave away, but behind the screen and on production, I think there's a different code of ethics and professionalism when it comes to a wild scale production. So I think that kind of would be the distinction. Mitch, to respond to you and saying Carlos is really invested in being professional, looking after his castmates, I don't see that when he laughs when they go to jail. I don't see that when Love and Marriage DC has taken, you know, a 10 month break between episodes and his cast members don't know what, what's going on. He hasn't contacted them. To me, that's not someone who's invested. He left them out to dry for 10 months and they returned. So I don't see that care and investment as much. I see him wanting to take credit when he could get the opportunity. And I think he took credit for the right article because messiness is the right thing he could take credit for. Yeah. Well, listen, I think that if you if you compare Carlos King to, let's say, Andy Cohen, Andy Cohen is someone who's had a string string of lawsuits, string of lawsuits from his cast, uh, from from members of his cast on his different shows, on his, real, his reality stars, string of lawsuits directed at him. Carlos King has not experienced the intensity of backlash when it comes to legal action that Andy Cohen has experienced. I don't that's think what we I was can talking put about. all that on Carlos. I don't okay. think he makes but the just, sole decision But just to, to respond to, to the lawsuit thing before I get that, get that, I think when it comes to lawsuits, again, as I've said before in this panel, it's alleged that the reason Carlos King isn't working as a producer for Bravo and that umbrella of networks under NBC is allegedly his involvement with spreading the rape, the, the, with spreading the rape gate rumors for season nine of Real Housewives of Atlanta. And I think the reason that Andy Cohen gets more backlash and gets more lawsuits is because he doesn't have shows 
like the bold and the bougie and the five digits. I think when people actually watch your shows, the majority of them, or they're not cancelled after a few seasons, like the string of shows I think Carlos has, I think that's you're in a lesser position to get the backlash as maybe Andy would. Okay. Uh, Damien, what were you going to say? Uh, no, I, I wanted to say this, that I've said this before up here, that even though I've had, you know, worked for Carlos before, I've said that I didn't agree with Sonny coming on the show as a producer. I thought that was a bad move. I feel like it messed with the integrity of the show big time. I didn't agree with that. And I also feel like that there is a, th- a, a like a fine line with him being a producer and a creator and then being this on-screen commentator, of you know, and talking about um, the shows. I do think there's a fine line there that maybe one day the network might give him some sort of ultimatum hey you can't do this if you're going to do this so there are some things there that yeah you know maybe you're a little questionable you look at with a side eye but i don't think he's responsible for all these things we're talking about yeah and i want to i want to say victor i do have an issue with on brocha on brocha you have repeatedly linked carlos king and the rape rumors with candy and phaedra you've repeatedly made that comparison and repeatedly linked carlos king to that but i do want to just put the reminder out there that after season nine, Carlos King and Todd Tucker, they did a show together. They did a show together called Hollywood Divas. The other executive producer, you know him as Candy Burris' new husband on The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Todd Tucker. Yeah. And I think that if there was some issues with Candy and Carlos King, I'm pretty sure Candy would have had a big issue with Carlos and Todd working together if she had an impression or a feeling that Carlos had involvement with that. Yeah. They would not have worked together if that was the case. So I think we we it's there's so no me, I'm a it, it's an unsupported it's an unsupported rumor. That's not true. It's an unsupported rumor. What you've put out there, I think no, that if Phaedra um, if Phaedra felt that thought that I'm pretty sure she would have said something about it. But I don't see Candy or Phaedra linking it to Carlos King, linking the rape rumor to Carlos King. King, I see you doing it. Well, I can let me give you more clarity on that. So with the Carlos King situation, the allegations come from people within production and within production specifically if someone like Carlos King and it goes around and it spread spread it at the time that someone from the Bravo network one of the producers had involvement in there that would make the network look bad so it's Bravo's job not to address it directly and to try and hide it as much as possible so I think Bravo did an effort to kind of conceal it as much as possible and not make the efforts to kind of conceal to to kind of ostracize him so apparent maybe not not, they didn't discuss it with cast members or everyone but that's what happens in these situations so that you can't if a producer does something bad if someone does something bad in these bigger network they have to keep it quieter because they represent the integrity of the brand kind of like where tamar said that i mean divine my bad um that the people behind the scenes were getting abused the producers and everybody was getting abused you remember that rumor that you peddled remember were you, were you I don't know. You know so much about me. No you more. tell me. You don't work there no more. You who was me. being abused? Who was, who was, he repeated it on this show, remember? Because I said, be careful for you get you, hit with the defamation. All you, baby. Use, all you, you, you said you said a lot of things. And I meant to well, send it to I mean, Carlos's Instagram while you up here lying for clout. You can send it if you want to send it. Otherwise, you have Carlos on the other side who is consistent. He uses and abuses most of his employees on camera and behind the camera. Mm-hmm. Most of the freelancers now, how do you that know work that? for him no longer no. do anymore. So I said what I said. If you were being used, you're being used. Like I said, no, you, you get said used for your services. Uh, you, you didn't say on the used. Street. Be careful of the words you, you use, sweetheart. Used, you get used all of the time and you're just trying to find something else to talk about because you got ate up. Be ate quiet up. and Baby, sit there you and enjoy me up the on show. Your best day. <laughs> you meet me on the show. runway. It's okay. I, look, it's I beat okay. you here. I beat you. I, it's I, okay. Baby, look at me and look at you. No agent. Now wants that's to why you, you mad. Up. No agent. Look at me and you look at to, you. you. I'm older than you and I still look younger and better than you, sweetheart. Okay, bros. I am older than you and I still look younger. Bros, I was, you know what, you know what, bros? I was thinking about, I was thinking about, you know, Melody Cherie. She's gone. Raggedy hat. Melody. 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 Melody Cherie has gone online. Melody Cherie has gone online and she's made some cryptic messages. She's found some cryptic messages about toxic leadership. She says, when you're in a leadership position, you don't talk about your people that's putting a check in your pocket. But when you are in a leadership position or so-called leadership position or executive position, 
<laughs> you don't talk about your people that's putting a check in your pocket. You don't. There are people who are on a path of self-destruction. Somebody said toxic leadership. That part. Some people aren't linking that to Carlos, but she didn't name his name for sure. But I do know that Love and Marriage Huntsville, they're gonna have their reunion coming up soon. And with Melody not promoting this Love and Marriage season, do you think Melody will show up to the Love and Marriage Huntsville reunion? And if she does, do you think that she's going to confront Carlos or just play it cool and go through the motions? Uh, Damien, what do you think? She's gonna play it You think, Tamar? She wants the job. Yes, she's gonna play it cool. She's gonna go through emotions. She's gonna get her checks so she can support her family. And she's gonna move on. I think that she was just being expressive. She said, she stated how she felt. Um, and that was that from there. I don't think that she's gonna actually leave. I, I hope she doesn't. <laughs> but I really, I truly think that she, she's very strong. She's strong willed. And I think that she, she's a firecracker. She's tough and she can definitely handle this. So I don't think she's gonna miss that. Damien, do you agree with that? Yeah, I agree with Devon on that. I think that at the end of the day, I think at the end of the day that um, Mel's going to show up. She's going to show up. I mean, why? Wh that's her bread and butter, just like he said. She's going to be there. And I think we're speculating at the end of the day. Everybody's speculating that yeah. she's not going to show up because she's not posting. I just think she's in her feelings. You know, she she can be a diva. So it just is what it is, I think. I'm, I, she'll be there front and center, right beside Carlos. Yeah. Right. And I don't think Damien's going to be there. Production's not looking for him. Yeah, you're right. I won't be there. But if I wanted to, I guarantee you I could. Because I, I got Angela Dugan's be number be in my phone. I got it's Brandon okay. Smith's number it's in my okay. phone. Be Baby, quiet. I could call him. You have all of these numbers. I do. And what you got? You still can't get a check. I don't Victor, have to Victor, Victor, and lie. Victor, well, I don't Victor, have to well, well, hold, on, and lie. hold on, hold on. My baby hairs, yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> Victor, if Melly does show up, do you think she's going to confront Carlos if she's there? I don't know. Like, I understand if, you know, she wouldn't show up. Carlos King didn't show up for Love and Marriage DC for 10 months and left them high and dry. So I would understand <laughs> that. I also think that when it comes to Carlos King, especially when it comes to women issues specifically, Specifically, we talk about domestic abuse. We talk about this man with how we're being doing revenge porn. I do think there's some right. exploitation of that trauma he has, and I think when it comes to women, there's that level of sensitivity that Carlos King's right. missing. For example, with Sweet Tea from Married to Medicine, he was doing a recap with Heavenly, and Carlos King said she needs to be less worried about this and more worried about her eggs. So I think between that, between how he's showing what's happening and those kind of abusive situations and the revenge porn situations when it comes to melody i would understand it doesn't know right. i don't know if she's in an environment where someone is receptive to her trauma and in reality tv even though it's kind of a free-for-all and it can come be a bit of a mess machine i think at the same time that always needs to be those moral boundaries and if you think you're in a place where your trauma is being exploited and there's not those resolves and it's happening season after season we're going to see those same issues happen again and again next season she's going to come back it's going to be intensified the same thing with her relationship it's going to get worse worse and she's putting that trauma again and again and again i don't know if that's healthy for her so i understand right. where she's coming from yeah because you know carlos king is all about following the reality so i hope that we learn the reality of melody and carlos's real relationship at that reunion i i, I think it may be the place for it to see melody tell the truth about how she's really feeling what she's really thinking if there is an issue if there's not then i guess there's nothing to say but but everyone looking in, let us know your point of view on everything that's going on with Carlos King, Melody, Love Marriage Huntsville. We'll see you again next time. Don't forget your perspective matters. See ya. Bye. Okay. <laughs>